Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Fatima Umar Buba. Good to have you join us. President Mohamed Buhari departs Abuja for Amman, the Jordanian capital, to honor an invitation by King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein to participate in the World Economic Forum in the Middle East and North Africa holding at the Dead Sea. A statement by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishina, says President Buhari will deliver an address at the opening of the plenary alongside King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein and United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. And also join world economic leaders in an informal gathering at the King Hussein bin Tala Convention Center. President Buhari is expected to hold bilateral meetings with some world leaders on the sidelines of the forum, as the meeting also seeks to explore investment opportunities in more than 140 countries. The president will also depart Amman on Sunday for Dubai, United Emirates, to participate in the ninth edition of the annual investment meeting scheduled for April 8th to 10th. The president will be accompanied on both trips by some governors, Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Onyama, the National Security Advisor, Major General Mohammed Baba Ghana Mongono retired, and other top government officials. President Mohamed Buhari has kept his promise that governance would not take the back seat in spite of his busy campaigns leading to the 2019 presidential elections. A statement by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishina, says major activities and achievements recorded during the campaign period include minimum wage bill, strategic revenue growth initiative, and the signing of executive order seven on road infrastructural development. He also noted that the campaign period didn't affect ongoing federal government construction projects, notably road rails and power across the country. There was also significant economic growth during the period on the review. Femi Adishina quoted figures of the National Bureau of Statistics, which says that the fourth quarter of the 2018, the country's economy grew by 2.38% and 1.93% for the whole year. And uh, moving on, uh, there is growing optimism that the country will attain its aspiration of being among the top 50 countries with ease of doing business environment. This is revealed by the number of performing ministries, departments and agencies, as well as organizations achieving 8% and above compliance with default approval and on one government directives, indicating better collaboration and improving ease of doing business in the country. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi reports. At the second Presidential Enabling Business Environment Awards night, everyone is a winner. As organizers say, there is an increasing collaboration among the stakeholders and adherence to the Executive Order 1, signed in May 2017, with the objective of promoting transparency and efficiency in the business environment. In the past three years, Nigeria has implemented more than 140 reforms to make doing business in Nigeria easier. The World Bank also reported in 2018 that 32 states of Nigeria improved their ease of doing business environment, led by Kaduna State, Enugu State, Abia, Lagos, and Anambra. Nigeria has the aspiration of achieving top 50 in the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Index by 2050, but still has so many hurdles to cross. To achieve this, we will be pursuing the continued implementation of reforms across all indicators, including the implementation of legislative reforms, specifically the signing into law of the new Companies and Allied Matters Act and the omnibus bills. The Senate and the House of Representatives are already given legislative support and organizers are still hoping other states will join in showing greater commitment to having a friendly business environment. Today, we have achieved noticeable changes and improvements that we can all be pleased and proud of. The men and women being recognized and celebrated here tonight 
have had the humility to learn, the courage to change, and the audacity to strive to deliver real impact under sometimes tough conditions. This falls in line with um, our promotion for the Enyimbe Economic City. And our aim and vision is to make Abia the investment heaven, not only in Nigeria, but in Africa. Uh, you, the administration of justice in a country moves so quickly and fast. Of course, that is one thing to attract foreign investors. I believe that we'll continue to try and improve on our service delivery, try and make sure that we bring more people into tax nets, make it more convenient for them to pay their taxes. The first Presidential Enabling Business Environment Award was held in 2018. From the State House Conference Center, Jide Onifate, NJ News. And the refusal of President Muhammadu Buhari to assent to eight bills, including the Ajakuta Completion Fund Bill, which seeks the sum of $1 billion for the completion of the multi-billionaire steel ruling mill, should be seen as an act of courage and patriotism. A statement signed by the chairman of the organization, Ni Akinsiju, says the refusal should also be seen as a move to save the nation from undue financial pressure in view of the financial constraint facing the country. According to the group, the president ought to be commended for giving critical thinking on bills passed to him and that no one should be left in doubt of the good intentions of the president for his refusal to sign the bills. As all reasons are used in respect of the rejection were objective and reasonable. What the country needs at this critical point, according to the group, is the harmonization of works of existing government agencies for the maximum benefits of people, rather than encouraging duplication of government departments that have little or no benefit for the people. It further encourages all patriotic Nigerians to respect this decision of the president and join the administration in its ongoing effort to reposition the country for the benefits of the people. And in a related development, of the Buhari Media Organization has described as totally untrue and unverifiable the global report on food crisis affecting some countries, including Nigeria. A statement by chairman of the group, Ni Akinsiju, says the report released by United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization is untenable, bearing in mind that under the Buhari's administration, there has been an increase in agricultural activities, leading to sufficiency in food production and availability. According to the group, there has been deliberate measures taken by the federal government to ensure adequate food for the victims of the Boko Haram insurgency due to the intervention by different agencies cooperating with the federal government in ensuring adequate food for the people in the war-affected areas. The group maintains that it runs contrary to reasons that an organization like the United Nations or any of its agencies will lump Nigeria with countries like Yemen, Syria and Afghanistan, where there are full-blown wars going by the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center. The BMO noted the number of internally displaced persons in Nigeria has reduced to about 417,000, while countries like Ethiopia and Syria account for 1.4 million and 1.2 million IDPs, respectively. The federal government is desirous of leveraging on the potency of information and communication technology in driving its economic recovery and growth plan. Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, Deaconess Grace Isu Gekpe, stated this in a message at the opening of an ICT capacity building program in Abuja. Anthony Forson reports. The capacity building program, which is in collaboration with the European Union's support for federal government reforms project, is designed for officers of federal agencies responsible for policy planning, revenue generation, performance monitoring, and development of statistics. Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, Deaconess Grace Isugekpe, who was represented by the Director of ICT in the Ministry, Comfort Ajiboye, restated the need for the training, which is in line with the federal government's desire to grow the economy. It is worthy of note that information and communication technology has systematically transformed the social awareness of Nigerians in line with global best practices. Nigeria, like most developing nations, 
have come to recognize the importance of information and communication technology as a catalyst for sustainable social economic development. Team leader of the EU SOFAGO project, Professor Ola Senibello, enumerated the importance of the training given the global acceptance of ICT in all endeavors. Because basic ICT is essential for human organization development, for human capital development, for even improving process delivery, I mean service delivery and the management information system. Um, and I'm sure that it will be very particularly useful for, for your ministry because we are in an information ICT age. This program cannot move on without the engagement of the government and of the different ministries involved. And I have to say that you've been an example of a collaborating partner. The program is targeted at specific federal government ministries. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. The federal government of Nigeria has condemned in the strongest terms the execution of a Nigerian Mrs. Kudirat Ajishola Afolabi, widow and mother of two in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for drug-related offenses. A statement issued by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Mustafa Suleiman, says while Nigeria respects the sovereignty of states and abhors the violation of domestic laws of any country, it will not condone such inhuman treatment meted on a Nigerian national. It also frowns at the Saudi authorities for not informing the Nigerian missions in Saudi Arabia of the arrest and prosecution of the deceased Nigerian, only to invite the mission to take the last will of the deceased prior to her execution on 1st April 2019. The ministry therefore assures Nigerians that it has engaged the Saudi authorities through their ambassador in Nigeria to ensure that the normal diplomatic practice is followed henceforth. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tukuri Suburate has restated the commitment of the armed forces in ensuring security of citizens and protecting the nation's territorial integrity. He, however, suggested an alternative funding package separate from the envelope budgeting method now in use to improve access to appropriated sums. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the Army Chief said this of the budget defense before the House of Representatives Committee on Ami. Security of lives and property in Nigeria, especially in view of security challenges being experienced in parts of the country, require a proactive approach to be tackled effectively. This, the Army General believes, could be achieved through improved funding. The Nigerian Army has expanded from five divisions to eight divisions and is currently engaged in war against the insurgency in the northeast and other criminal elements in the northwest and indeed in the north central. In preparing the 2019 budget, the Nigerian army is requesting for the sum of 472.8 billion naira only. However, the Ministry of Budget and National Planning proposed the total sum of 200 and 32.4 billion naira only. Chairman of the House Committee on Army, Representative Rimandi Shaolu, expressed readiness of the committee to ensure that the Army is adequately funded to secure the lives of citizens. In the meantime, the House of Representatives Committee on Public Procurement has, while interacting with the Bureau of Public Procurement on the agency's budget performance for 2018 in proposals for 2019, directed it to reconcile figures in the budget document after noticing some discrepancies. Some projects were abandoned, some projects were not attended to, and so I want to know the basis. I want to know the, you know, for adopting your method of expenditure. The committee wants to, among other issues, know how the Bureau arrived at more than 419 million as capital expenditure for 2019. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. 
In the meantime, the presentation by the Nigerian Television Authority before the House of Representative Committee on information of its budget performance in 2018 and proposals for the 2019 has been described as one of the most comprehensive so far of the ongoing budget defense of the National Assembly. It is against this backdrop that the committee chaired by Olusegun Adebumi promised to give necessary consideration to the report for adoption. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali again reports. Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, NCA, Malam Yakubu Ibn Muhammad, during his presentation before the committee, gave a breakdown of appropriations for personnel, overhead and capital expenditure, as well as internally generated revenue for 2018, and proposals for 2019, as reflected in the documents forwarded to the committee for consideration. He expressed the commitments of the NCA in discharging its mandate as a national public service television network, adding that the support enjoyed by the NCA from the committee in terms of appropriate amounts required for procurement of later state-of-the-art equipment for effective operations has led to unprecedented achievements, citing the coverage of the 2019 elections as one among several others. When we asked for funds, funds were appropriated and that enabled us to get the necessary equipment that we needed, especially for the coverage of the 2019 elections. Like I said, we covered the elections in a manner never before done in the history, in the 41 year history of the NTA. For this, we are eternally grateful to God and to all those on whose shoulders you know we cried who listened to our cries and who wiped our tears chairman of the committee representative olusha gudebumi expressed confidence in the commitments of the nta and assured that the committee will study the financial documents for consideration and subsequent adoption I commend you for a very good uh, work. This is a very, very commendable um, um, presentation. Other committee members said NCA has over the years proved to be an organization of pride at both local and global levels as it daily strives to expand on operations and reach. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Meanwhile, issues pertaining to digital switchover came up when the National Broadcasting Commission appeared before the House of Representatives Committee on Information for Budget Defense. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali has that report, and she said this and a budget defense by FRCN and M NPC was also presented. The budget defense by the National Broadcasting Commission featured review of 2018 performance by the regulatory body and its projections for 2019. Committee members sought clarifications on operations concerning the digital switchover from the Director General of the NBC, Madibu Kau. Saying there's never an appropriation bill sent by the executive that include the, the, that the, maybe you can give us anyone that is included with the DSO. The government set up a presidential task force which came out with that white paper. And the white paper has been implemented for the last, since 2014, as an instrument of, uh, of uh, putting together this digital switch over. So it's the base upon which everything has been done around DSO has been done. Director General of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, Mansur Liman said the corporation, in spite of challenges, has sustained optimal performance. We want to again continue to solicit for your support in the 2019 budget so that uh, Radio Nigeria will be able to uh, do the needful in trying to make sure that uh, we uplift the nation and uh, unite the country. The Nigeria Press Council was also before the committee to defend its budget. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. 
And the Senate Committee on Navy has promised to support the Nigerian Navy to ensure it performs its constitutional role of defending and safeguarding the nation's maritime resources. Chairman of the committee, Isa Miso, who gave the assurance during the 2019 budget defense of the Nigerian Navy, says the Nigerian Navy, apart from its constitutional role, is faced with multidimensional issues such as crude oil theft, illegal bunkering and pipeline vandalism, among others. By democracy, you have to find a way of putting it open for people to see uh, what you're doing so that at least anywhere we go, we'll be able to stand and say, this is what we're giving. Despite all these, a chief of naval staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Etebas, highlighted the achievements of the Navy in 2018 and listed what, the intends, what it intends to achieve in 2019. The Seawall Defense Boat and Inshore Patrol Boats. Others include strengthening the Nigerian Navy uh, um, through the induction of three Augusta 109 helicopters, procurement of additional rigid hull inflatable boats for special operations as well as unmanned area vehicles for improved intelligence gathering and reconnaissance amongst others. The committee urged the Nigerian Navy to be scientific in its fight against maritime crimes. You're watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We'll now pause for a break. We'll be back with more reports. Please stay with us. New edition of TV Guide is out with special focus on the role of the media in election coverage. Exclusive on the National Broadcasting Commission, its mandate as the sole regulator of Nigerian media. Dr. Toba Daba Den and Ishak Modi Bokau now. This edition also features the king of stand-up comedy in Nigeria, Ali Baba. NTA standard to be ready for election transmission after decades of abandonment. Find out from the DG transactional elections in our political space and even win that blows no good. DG, National Orientation Agency calls for TV Guide, your indispensable companion, X-rays the impact of social media on election election process as electorates present their expectations from incoming government. Meet some TV professionals behind the screen and other inspiring stories in sports, entertainment and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or NTA stations nation. Wide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. You can follow us on all our social media platforms Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Live. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Good to have you back on Nationwide. Water Resources Committee of uh, the House of Representatives has has given the Ministry of Water Resources till Monday, the 8th of April, to submit all relevant documents that will substantiate its claims on the 2018 budget performance. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports that the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Comfort Ekaro, led other management officials to the budget defence at the National Assembly complex. The 2019 appropriations estimate for the Water Resources Ministry and ISPRA status is at 1.949 billion naira. The ministry is still desirous of pursuing projects that could make significant impact on infrastructural development and a rollover of about 60% of the 2018 projects. 
in, in the 2019 physical year. With 2018 budget performance put at 43.73%, the committee members, in a page-by-page -page scrutiny of the budget performance, expressed dissatisfaction over delays in the procurement processes which slowed down completion of water projects ongoing across the country. How can we explain this to the Nigerian people? That in this country where access to potable water is only 6%, the population of close to 200 million people, you have money, you refuse to use it. For the ministry that this money came into, it came in two trenches. The second one was in December. And by February, all the processes have been completed. December to now is the whole quarter. It has been completed. That is why I said the contracts are on. And as they come with their certificates of completion, they will be paid. The members also demanded explanation on the revenue generation, its utilization, award of contracts, staff nominal role that justifies the personnel cost, amongst other requests for authenticity of documents presented. Please, we want you to go back properly, yes. to put your documents together. You've already seen the queries from us, including the additional spending. In addition to other issues raised by the committee, is the abandonment of various water projects within the rural communities across the country, and as such, the committee demanded update of all ongoing projects being executed by the ministry as well as the review of the registered assets of the ministry. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Now, a UN holds regional conference on marine safety and fisheries. Dotun in Lagos is our guide. Hello, Dotun. Hello, Fatima, and welcome to Lagos. The Accident Investigation Bureau says six serious air incident reports will be released before the end of the month. Prominent among the report was the accident of a Cessna 208B caravan involving former governor of Taraba State, Dambaba Fulani Sontai, which occurred in 2012. Michael Olale reports. Gathered in this hall are aviation stakeholders with the common interest of enhancing safety in the industry. They are exercising their rights to give suggestions to the amendment of the 2016 civil aviation regulations. Those new amendments are part and parcel of the evolution of what is called research and development and indeed the development of the industry itself. The Accident Investigation Bureau believe there have been tremendous reduction in the rate of air accidents, but it is working around the clock to ensure that more final reports are released in the coming days. One of them is the accident involved uh, the former governor of Taraba State was in, the late governor, the one he flew and crashed. Uh, you have the Bristol S76, the Dana in Port Harcourt. You have the Gulf Stream 200, the one that happened in Abuja. All last year, all within one year. The commissioner of AIB, Aki Olateru, said timely release of accident reports will be possible with the collaboration of relevant agencies. We have a very robust laboratory for downloads of what you people call the black boxes. Air Force doesn't have this. Rather than send your recorders abroad for download in case of an accident, you can do the download in our lab. That's leveraging on our own um, resources. And when an aircraft crash into a very bad terrain, for instance, Air Force can support our investigators in terms of logistics to that support. This is all the whole essence of the MOU. But we've been on this for two years. Efforts to ratify the civil aviation regulations of 2016 is continuing. It's now back to the studio for the continuation of the news. Nigeria and nations around the world rely on marine resources for their livelihood, poverty reduction, food security and economic growth. 
experts at the second edition of the United Nations Regional Conference on Marine Safety and Fisheries Protection say the benefits of the ocean offer are vast, being eroded as a result of pollution and global warming. Jennifer Igwe has details. 80% of marine pollution, according to experts, originates from land-based pollutants. And most of these are oil spills, plastic waste, pesticides, industrial chemicals and heavy metals. The issue of uh, uh, plastic uh, you know, pollution is compounding to the already known you know, um, issue of oil spill agents. Participants at this regional conference on marine safety and fisheries by the United Nations Institutes for Training and Research, drawn from different parts of the nation and Africa, say challenges of marine pollution is being compounded by the impact of global warming and climate change. You, you, what, what will not happen is that fishes will swim more into the deep and then it becomes more difficult for uh, fishermen to catch. They go out, they come back. And Sustainable solutions and initiatives to check marine pollution and increase awareness on the menace were examined. It's an opportunity, you know, for experts and countries coming from different countries in the region to agree on the implementation of the blue economy principles in our countries. How we can take advantage of the wealth that is so abundant, you know, in the lagoons and the marine and coastal environment. Norway has had uh, pollution as well. We have experienced that uh, legislation, monitoring and implementing measures to improve the situations are very important to, to improve the situation. The two-day workshop is being organized in conjunction with the Norwegian government. In Lagos, Jennifer Igwe, NTA News. Early detection and application of the right solution is key to giving autistic children a sense of belonging capable of making them contribute positively to the growth of the society. This was the view of caregivers and health experts at a forum in Lagos. Annie Daniels has details. Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder of variable severity that is characterized by difficulty in social interaction and communication. Research shows that about 100,000 cases of autism are recorded globally every year with no known cause. Because they have challenging behaviors, the behavior is what the parents see first. They sometimes neglect the strength that the children possess, such as creative, uh, creative arts, as you can see, Music is a good, is a very strong passion. Math and calculation is a very strong strength in our children with autism. It's not a disease. It's not something that you have to condemn the child, you have to condemn the woman. Even here, we have seen parents that say their husband left them because they said they gave birth to a useless child. It is therefore to encourage parents and guardians of autistic children and member states of the United Nations to take measures to raise awareness about people with autistic disorder all over the world. In doing this, these caregivers took time to broaden the minds of members of the society on the puzzle ribbon adopted in 1999 as the universal sign of autism awareness. These autistic children, drawn from across Lagos State, we are also put through the rudiments of arts, after which the children put into practice what they learned. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Lagos. It's back to Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide. Well, thank you very much, Adutum. Reports just reaching us says that President Muhammad Buhari has departed Abuja for Amman, Jordanian capital. And FCT High Court has dismissed a no-case submission of Mariam Sanda in an alleged murder case. Mariam Sanda is standing trial on the alleged killing of her husband, Biliami Nobello. The presiding judge, Justice Yusuf Halilu, ordered the defendant to enter her defense. Justice Yusuf Halilu held that from the preponderance of evidence of all the prosecution witnesses. A thick cloud has been formed by the prosecution, making it's important to call the other side
to make their case. Justice Halilu, however, upheld the no-case submission of the other three defendants and made Sadia Aminu, who were accused by police of assisting Mariam to conceal the evidence by cleaning the blood of the deceased from the scene of the crime. The judge held that the police, either by omission or commission, have clearly not done well in time Maimuna, Aliu and Sadia to the offence. The court thereafter fixed May 6th for Mariam to open her defence and order that the trial shall be on a day-to-day -day basis unless otherwise decided by the court. And moving on now, the Federal High Court in Abuja has struck out a suit filed by the Senate President, Dr. B Dr. Dr. Bukola Saraki and two other senators are seeking the enforcement of their fundamental rights by the Nigerian police. Justice Okon Agbang struck out the suit on the grounds that the court did not have a valid application before it. Judiciary correspondent Femi Ukiu has the story. The event of the 5th of October 2018, when the People's Democratic Party organized a protest march to the headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission and the police headquarters, all in Abuja, formed the background to this case. Senate President Dr. Bukola Saraki, along with Senator representing Kogi West, Dino Melai, and Senator representing Bayelsa East, Ben Mori Bruce, shortly after the protest, approached the court, praying the court for the enforcement of their fundamental rights to free movement and association. This followed, according to them, the disruption of their protest march by the police and also an invitation for interrogation by the Nigerian police. Their application before the court also included a prayer seeking for compensation to the tune of 500 million naira. But Justice Okon Abang said none of the three applicants personally deposed to the affidavit before the court, breaching Order 2, Rule 4 of the Fundamental Rights Enforcement Rules, and rendering the affidavit, which was deposed to by one effort Okoye, a documentary hearsay. Justice Okon Abang therefore struck out the suit, saying that the courts are not meant to restrain the police from carrying out their duties as long as the steps taken by the Nigerian police are in line with the law. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NT News. And for more on other happenings in Kaduna, let's join Abdullahi, who is standing by with details on NDLEA's arrest of suspected drug addicts in Jigawa State. Thank you for joining us in Kaduna, Fatima. The presentation of certificate of return to Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje by the Independent National Electoral Commission in Kano has cleared the cause for his swearing in for a second term. Abdullahi Mustafa reports that Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje was presented with a certificate of return along with his deputy Nasur Yusuf Gauna and 27 out of 40 members of the state legislature who were elected on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC. This is the last stage of the electoral process in Kano State. It is coming 11 days after the governorship supplementary elections that saw the emergence of Dr. Abdullah Omar Ganduji of the All Progressives Congress as winner. Dr. Ganduji, alongside his deputy, were issued certificates of return by INEC National Commissioner in charge of Kanu, Kazena, and Jigawa states of Wakarnahuchi. <laughs> also, 27 of the 40 Kanu State House of Assembly members elect received their certificates of return from the Kanu Resident Electoral Commissioner, Rizkwa Arabushehu. Among them are Hamisu Ibrahim of Mokoda constituency, who was elected for the sixth time, and Murtala Musakura of Dambata, who is among the first time members. This is going to give me a, uh, a chance, inshallah, to, do, to redouble what I have been doing so that the people of Mokoda will enjoy the dividends of democracy. We are very much happy for this very day. This is a very good day. That is a remarkable day. None of the 13 members elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, was present at the ceremony. In all, Kano State has 69 elected offices, including governor and his deputy, three senators, 24 members of the House of Representatives, as well as 40 members of the state legislature. 
Inkanu Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. Many thanks, Abdullahi, there from Kanu. And back in Kaduna, Federal House of Representatives members elect on the platform of the All Progressives Congress from Northwest region have reiterated their loyalty to the decision of the party on the leadership structure of the Ninth National Assembly as proposed by the National Chairman, Adam Sushomali. Muhammad Omar Ajingi reports that the members disclosed this in Kaduna after an extensive deliberation. His report. APC members elect from the zone met to deliberate on the proposal for the new leadership structure recommended by their party with the view of coming up with a common resolution as united colleagues from the same zone. The coordinator of the forum, a member representing Wuno Raba Federal Constituency, Ibrahim Al Mustafa Ali, who said the agreement is very important for the purpose of unity and progress of the APC as the majority party at the okay. National okay. Assembly. Lots of new members forum endorse and align with the position of the party on the leadership structure of the Ninth Assembly. And six, NOTO's new members forum have endorsed Honorable Kao Sumaila for any leadership position zone to Northwest. APC has a number. We are 200 plus, and in the Senate we have the required number. Therefore, if we organize ourselves, we can have it all. The members elect they promise to work in accordance with the party's manifesto by respecting their leaders' opinion for the unity and progress of democracy in Nigeria. In Kaduna, I'm Muhammad Murajingi, NTN News. Drug abuse matters now. The National Drugs Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, in Jigawa State has gone after youths alleged to have engaged in the use of hard drugs, leading them to thuggery and other unwanted behaviors. Consequently, the agency arrested more than 14 suspects. Awal Muhammad Kazuri has details. The clampdown on the drug addict resulted in this arrest with exhibit such as cannabis, extols, and Valium solutions, which are dangerous to their lives. The state commandant of the NDLEA, Josephine Ruth, cautioned youth against taking hard drugs, warning politicians to stop engaging these Nigerians in Togri. Many of them have been using drugs for a long time, so they can even help their people by bringing them for rehabilitation. You know, they will contribute more to society when they are not on drugs. The agency added that the suspect will be subjected to counseling for some times in the command for them to become useful members of the society. It's also vowed to arrest the dangerous drugs dealers in the state. From Duse, Awal Muhammad Kazori, NTA News. And thank you, our there from Kazori, and that ends our contribution from Kaduna. It's back to Fatima in Abuja, who is standing by to continue nationwide. Fatima. Thank you very much, Abdullahi, there. And uh, more on election petition tribunal sittings in Ibadan with Kemi Akinwadi. Kemi, it's over to you. Okay, well, about that, I think we'll get back to Kemi. Okay, Kemi, it's there. Thank you. Fatima for joining us again in Ibadan. The Governorship National and State House of Assembly Elections Petitions Tribunal has granted petitions of the just concluded general election, including APC governorship candidates of Oyo State, Adebayo Adelabu, permission for a court order to be served contesting the 2019 elections. The court session of the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal sitting, which was presided over by Justice Anthony Apovi, saw the appointment of Governorship candidate of the APC, Adebayo Adelabu, of court processes against Governor-elect of Oyo State, Sheyimakinde, and PDP, challenging the victory of the Governor-elect in the March night Governorship poll. The hearing application sitting was aimed at seven respondents by substituted means after initial efforts to serve the Governor-elect were unsuccessful. Meanwhile, the court also received various motions to serve and check election materials used during the just concluded elections by various petitioners from both the National Assembly and House of Representative candidates. It could be recalled that a total number of 32 petitions were filed contesting the 2019 general elections in Oyo State, four of which were filed to contest the results of the Senate election, 12 against the House of Representatives, 15 against the House of Assembly elections, while one was filed against the governorship election. 
The court has granted APC governorship candidates Adebayo Adelabu permission to serve governor-elects, Sheyima Kinde and PDP a court order. This court order will be pasted in public places for all to see. It is after this the proper hearing will commence in Ibadan, Gukia Lomagi, NTA News. All is now set for the takeoff of Ogun State Polytechnic Ikokia ahead of its scheduled maiden matriculation in May. Ogun State Governor Ibikula Musun stated this during an inspection tour of the newly constructed institution and other projects in Ogun West Senatorial District. Neko Agmode reports. The inspection tour of the facilities revealed that the stage is set for the matriculation of over 3,000 students for the OND programs after the commissioning by President Muhammadu Buhari in the month of May. The governor expressed satisfaction with the level of completion. This school have come to stay. And the idea is this, immediately we move this school here. Mass text takes off immediately. Because we are moving them from Moshud Abiola Polytechnic. We are starting the master plan of Moshud Abiola University of Science and Technology before I leave. This is a virgin land and this is virgin for development. We're bringing a world-class polytechnic to a location like this. Uh, it's going to have a multiplier effect on the social and economic development of the community. The governor, I have appealed to the people of Ipokia community to embrace the visitors that will be coming from all over the country and beyond. We are going to have people from different backgrounds, different ethnic groups, different religion, please, uh, we want all of us to embrace them. Other projects under construction, including Ilaro Owode Road, were also inspected. Lekon Agbode, NC News. Students of the Polytechnic Ibadan were sent home on a compulsory mid-semester break today following a pandemonium that broke out on campus. Kemioshi has details. The crisis began after a female football match organized by the student union government between two campuses of the institution, which led to an alleged stabbing of a student. A reprisal attempt by the victim's campus, however, led to the unrest. As at the time of filing this report, many parts of the school have been deserted, while some students are seen gathered in groups discussing the development. Although management of the institution have denied rumors that some students lost their lives. A mid-semester break has been declared from Thursday 4 to Wednesday 10th of April 2019. So the management put a stop to all student union activities. And of course the management has also gone a step further to uh, give the students a break, a mid-semester break to uh, enable the management sit back and reassess the situation before they will resume. In the meantime, the Oyo State Police Commissioner Shino Olukolu confirms that normalcy has been restored at the institution. When the police got the information, I deployed the policemen around the school. The area commander led the team, the DPO Songo. They were all there with policemen from other formations to ensure that there is no breakdown of uh, law and order. He promised that perpetrators of the unrest will be brought to book in Ibado. Kemioshi, NTA News. And that's it from Ibado. Fatima, it's back to you. Thank you very much, Kemi. A federal high court has ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to announce the result of Ajerumi, a Ifeludu federal constituency in Lagos, which has so far been collated before the election was declared inconclusive. Justice Bello Kao gave the ruling in Abuja. Omenka Amarachuku reports. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Rita Oji, in Ajoromi Ifelodun Federal Constituency of Lagos State, had petitioned the court against INEC and APC over the announcement of results in the February 23rd National Assembly elections. In the judgment, 
The court dismissed the notice of preliminary objection on jurisdiction and assumed held that it has jurisdiction to entertain the suit. It then held that INEC was under the obligation to comply with the process of law as it concerns the conduct of the elections. He has not declared anybody a winner as requested by the, the plaintiff. What the plaintiff wanted from the court is for the court to declare her the winner of the election. But the court recognized that he has no power to do that. But all he requested from the, the INEC as a body is to go and perform their constitutional rule. We are not against a result being declared inconclusive, but we are against a situation whereby a collated result is refused to be announced. We are comfortable with the judgment of the court, and that judgment of the court will stand the test of time in any part of Nigeria before any court. Following this judgment, parties will now await a date for the announcement by INEC. In Abuja, Omenka, Amarachuku, NTA News. And also, a federal high court in Abuja has annulled the election of Peter Umoboshi as the senator-elect for Delta North Senatorial District. Justice Ahmed Mohammed gave the order in a case instituted by Ned Mwoko against the People's Democratic Party on his candidacy. Ola Bodiariwa reports. Delivering his judgment, Justice Ahmed Mohammed. Elder Peter Mwoboshi did not win the People's Democratic Party primary for Delta North. Held on the 2nd of October 2018, the plaintiff Ned Nwoko approached the courts seeking to be recognized as the rightful candidate, having polled majority of the lawful votes cast during the primary election. Ned Nwoko argued that he scored 453 votes to defeat Peter Nwoboshi, who scored 405 votes. To his surprise, the PDP jettisoned the results and forwarded Nwoboshi's name as his candidate for the senatorial district. Peter Nwoboshi said Nwoko's case was deficient since it was not fired within the 14 days provided for by the law. The judge observed that the PDP aired by failing to produce ballot papers used for the election when ordered to do so. Justice Muhammad subsequently ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to publish the name of Ned Woko as the PDP candidate. The Independent National Electoral Commission, the PDP, and Senator Nwoboshi were respondents in the matter in Abuja or Labodarewa, NTA News. And now to sports. Marjoria moved upwards in latest FIFA World Rankings as enthusiasts rally support for growth of chess in schools. Ayodeji Makinde has more on this and sports update. 